They try very hard to distract us with garbage. People are living a life where they're working a job, they're being enslaved by the machines for their tasks, but their mind is distracted by garbage. When the woman's still sucking dick, the, the, the mortgage is paid, dinner's on time, it's kind of doop de doop de doo little by little, do a little bit of work, do a little bit of relax. But the big events come from trauma. You're too poor to have an opinion, so you're too poor to think. Where they try very hard to distract us with garbage. Rihanna. I have nothing against Rihanna. Like, I don't know her. But when I see a concert and I see hundreds of thousands of peons standing amongst peons. 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 What are they? Peons is the people who go to these concerts. Right. Peon means peasant. Standing at. Because, this and, is an education in language. No, but, <laughs> but they are peasants because they're acting in a peasant, peasant way. They're acting like peasants. Hundreds of thousands of people in a crowd looking up at somebody like they're God, jumping up and down for hours on end. You're a peasant. You're a peasant. And your life's shit, and you have no achievements, no money, you're depressed, but you're distracted. They've distracted you with this idol, whoever it happens to be. Put them there, and the peasant's like, yeah. It's, and then they go home, and they're told something by the news. Let's again, let's make up a completely false scenario. Be afraid of the common cold. Okay, and then anyone who comes back and says, why are we afraid of the common cold? They delete their point of view. They shut them up to create a false reality. So people are living a life where they're working a job, they're being enslaved by the machines for their tasks, but their mind is distracted by garbage and only fed a fake story, and they're living inside of a computer-generated simulation. They're living inside of a world that is not real. They don't live in a real world. A lot of people live inside of the matrix completely, especially the people who dislike me. But anybody who is a fan of mine, I want those people to be as wealthy as possible because they agree with my mindset and they need, I want to equip my, my soldiers. I don't want everyone who agrees with me to be an unimportant brokey. I want the people who agree with me to be influential and rich and I want them to be able to stand up and talk and fight for themselves. So this is the reason I teach people how to make money because I know anybody who resonates with my message the wealthier they get, the better the war is going to be for me. So I wouldn't consider it philanthropic. I have an agenda, but my agenda is to find anybody who agrees with me and give them as much money as possible. So that's the real world, which is launching on corporatetech.com, because that's stage one. You're asking how to escape. Stage one is you must make money. I've, I've tried very hard to help people with no money, but there's just too many blocks in the way. You just, you can't put that on social media. You can't afford a day off work. You, you can't afford your boss to get mad. You can't afford to get arrested. You can't get a lawyer. You can't, you can't fight. Mm. You can't fight. You need bullets in your gun. So stage one is to get rich. Then you have to get rich while preserving your soul. And that's a harder part, right? Because as you get rich, as you climb, there are many different hands trying to drag you in different directions. He says, looking at me over his glasses. <laughs> you have women gambling, drugs, degeneracy, hedonism. Isn't you that have, why you have money? <laughs> as well, this is it. And you can dabble, yeah. but you certainly don't want to lose your soul completely. Yeah. You have large business interests offering more money, more power to believe X, to say X. I can sit here and say now, I have never sold a scam to anybody. I don't sell crypto pump and dumps to anybody. I don't sell soft drinks full of sugar to anybody. I don't convince, I don't, I've been offered money by gambling companies. I said no. I, only thing I teach is how, is teach people how to make money. And I know it works because I do it all myself. Me and my professors teach what we already do to all become multimillionaires <coughs> to people. And I've told the reason why. They've tried to get me to sell my soul to sell crap to the world endless times. And I've never done it. So you have these offers, right? When you're the most Googled man on the planet, do you have any idea how much they'll pay you to sell bollocks to people? This, yeah, Andrew, hey, here, this, this, this energy drink, say it's what you take to have high energy and sell this shit full of sugar to children and there's $100 million. No, I won't do it. I don't believe in it. I won't do it. So then you have to keep your moral fiber and, and stay principled, which is another bowel. But if you manage to make money and stay true to your own moral fibers and principles and stay perspicacious, word of the day, <laughs> keep paying attention to the world and actually keep your eyes open and look around, then you'll naturally escape the matrix. It's natural for the human mind. It's natural human evolution for us to spiritually escape the enslavement.
because the enslavement is from man, but our enlightenment is from God. It is natural for us, if you get rich enough to say no to ideas that you understand are innately wrong, if you get rich enough to have a different opinion, if you pay a lot of attention and you resist all of the temptations of the devil, the only possible end state is to escape the matrix. It's an easy trajectory. Most people fall off because they're too broke to think. You're too poor to have an opinion, so you're too poor to think. The rest fall off because they get a little bit rich and they get snapped up. But anybody who doesn't fall for those two traps ends up where I am. And there are a lot of us. And where are you? I am in a stage of enlightenment outside of the matrix. I'm like Morpheus. I, I, <laughs> I come in and out. I come back into the matrix. I come to YouTube. I talk to people whose minds are ready to be freed. I convince them to join the real world at CobraTake.com and begin their journey. And I take the free minds and we escape the matrix together. This is why for a long time on Twitter, I had an account called Morpheus. I was Morpheus because that's what I kept getting compared to. I, I come in and out trying to free the minds. And I hope I find Neo. I hope I find somebody who's even better at attacking the matrix than I am. All I'm trying to do is talk to the people who understand what I'm saying is right. When I say these things, there are going to be certain amounts of people who listen to this and think I'm crazy. He's crazy. And there's going to be people who listen to it and go, yes, finally. He's, finally I understand. Finally I know what to do. I've felt this for so long. I've looked around me and knew that this shouldn't be my life. I knew that they're lying to me. I didn't know what to do. Now he's told me what to do. Those are the ones I'm interested in. And they can join the real world inside of corporatetech.com. I'll see them there. Anybody who thinks I'm crazy, that's fine. I'm crazy. Don't worry about me. I'm a crazy misogynist. The news has never lied to anybody. All Every war ever started, the reason the news told you, that's why it started. It's not like every single one's been a false flag since the beginning. Every single narrative that they've tried to purport upon you is not to control you. It's because they want you to know the truth because you're so important. Don't worry. So if the media is lying about me, they must be right. Why would they lie? Why would they try and convince people that the world's most influential man is somehow bad? Is it, it's not because you know, they're worried he has influence and might push the world in a good direction. Of course not. No, it's because he's such a bad guy. That's why he has no criminal record. No girls come forward saying I've done anything to anybody. No victims of any kind. And somehow I'm evil. And the people who believe this garbage are slave-minded. They're slave-minded. If any man's honest with himself, Think about the biggest transformative stages in your life. Think about the times you got the most work done. It was a bad part of your life. You were heartbroken or you know, you lost a house or broke or whatever. That's when you did shit. When everything was fine, when the woman's still sucking dick, the, the, the mortgage is paid, dinner's on time, it's kind of doop de doop de doo little by little, do a little bit of work, do a little bit of relax. But the big events come from trauma. This is it. So it's a cheat code. It's a cheat code to climb the mountain. So when I get a message from whoever and he goes, my wife left me, I'm devastated. I say, I understand. I completely understand how hard it can be to lose a woman that you've given your entire life to. But my answer is, good. It's still good. Now take all of that pain and instead of emailing me, do this. And then you're going to become the kind of person that women don't leave. I don't think that you should be ending human life and it's interesting, right? Because there's a whole big argument about this in the States, but I, I don't think you should be ending human life if your primary concern is that, you know, oh, I'm too young, I need to experience more. Experience what? What, restaurants? How many restaurants do you have to go to? Yeah. How many times you gotta go eat until you eventually realize you're going to eat shit? Yeah. I mean, like, I don't see what else there is worth doing. Okay. So. Well, what about in cases of rape? Yeah, I, th I think just we'll put that one, maybe you didn't. No, we can talk about that one. But every single time the abortion argument is brought up, this very specific case is brought up. Let's let's be honest, that's less than 0.1% of them. But abortion. in those cases, if they're raped, would you accept an abortion? I, I think that if you're raped by somebody completely random on the street and yeah. a rapist did this to you, then yeah, I think the idea of an abortion makes a lot more sense, sure. But to say that abortion's okay because women sometimes no. get raped, like that's a false, no, 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 no. that's no, a false not saying in a specific case, you know? Cases. It's in a specific case. Yeah. But I think if you're with a man and you're having sex with that man and, and you get, and you get, it, and yeah. you get pregnant by that man, you should just accept the responsibilities like a fucking adult yeah. and have, and have some life. And the thing is, as you grow older, if you don't have a bunch of children, your later years are filled with deaths as opposed to being filled with births and life 
I think if you don't have a family yeah. or you don't have children, as you get older, the, the twilight years of your life are just everybody you know slowly dying and there's no new life injected. So yeah. I think it's very important to do and maybe young people don't understand that in time. But all in all, I think there's nothing more worthwhile for people to do than have children. And if you can financially afford it, then that's a what A lot of uh, teens or young people or even adults, they're suffering from a lot of mental health issues. Okay. And what's your advice to them? The world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. Yeah. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless flawlessly and then sit and go oh but he doesn't feel good so he's allowed to fuck up no you are not you're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to god or to yourself you have to perform this is how it this is what being a man is about the baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing i can't comment on being a woman because i'm not one but the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a fucking loser. No problem, stay yeah. a loser, don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting, I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard, winners only. Yeah, if you had to choose money or love. It's hard, it's impossible to. <laughs> it's impossible to choose, like there's too many nuances to the question, I can't choose. But I do think that love is extremely important. Humans are social animals yeah. and, you, and you do need love. They say money can't buy love and that's true, but money can help facilitate love. Yeah. Let's keep that in mind. I've never had a period of loneliness ever. Wow. I've never had even three days with that when I couldn't wow. fight, never ever. So ever. You, you've never really been alone in your life? Well, no, I've never needed to be. So do you I know could, I mean, I could be, and I'm saying I could take a week away and go by myself somewhere. I'm saying but I've never had a period where I didn't have a girl who was in love with me ever. Yeah. My, the goal of a son is to be a, a, a built on better version of his father, right? Yeah. So my goal as my father's successor is to be even more successful than he was, to be a better version of him. Yeah. I do my very best. I still think he was better than me in most regards, but in the one area I have surpassed him is, is clearly financially. But my father had a different mission and he was focused on what he did and he did a fantastic job of it. But yeah, he was not financially successful. I'm actually glad for that because I'm glad I was raised completely poor and I was raised broke poor. I wasn't yeah. raised, everyone goes, I was raised poor. No, no, I was raised completely broke. We yeah. were in a homeless hostel, we changed country and we were living with a bunch of Kosovan war refugees and yeah. we, we had a really bad story. But that's been good for me. That was part of the life plan that God made for me. But yeah, my, my father was not financially successful. I am, and, and, and that's actually plaguing me a bit because I don't want my kids to be raised rich. So I have to, to find a solution for this. Wow, really, son? I'm so proud of you. It was just like, well, duh. It was, always, it was always very much like that. Yeah, like, you're gonna hey, make it. Hey, dad, I'm the most Googled man in the world and I've got hundreds of millions of dollars. Duh, your tape. Whatever, like it was, we, he, his expectations of me, but they weren't in an arrogant way. They were just so ridiculously high. It was just, well, obviously. So I don't think we talk much about the material successes of anything. My, my father would be happiest knowing that his bloodline is secure and that I exist and my goal is to have 20 sons and that's what he'd be happiest to know and that he's done his job and to know that I pay respect to him every chance I get. And I mention him as much as possible. and. He did a fantastic job with me. The great thing about children is that if you do a good job with them, a truly exceptional yeah. job, they allow you to live forever. Because my father is only discussed, my father is discussed on the biggest podcast in the world repeatedly yeah. because of me. 
No, I'm I, such, I love that. Which is good. Yeah. I'm such a fantastic person that yeah. they discuss my origin, which makes which means my dad is discussed. So yeah. if I do a fantastic job with my son, I will be discussed on the biggest podcast of the future, yeah. and you get to stay alive forever. Yeah. Um. So that's going to be the end goal, and I I feel that I'm I'm doing him justice and the and the ancestors justice and the last name justice. In fact, I know I am. Of course, he'd be exceptionally proud, and then he'd probably whoop me at chess, and then he'd go back to wherever he's chilling. So yeah. that would be it. That's beautiful. Okay, so the days of easy money are gone. I want to like, even in the last two or three years, it was easy money mode. Every idiot you knew was making money. Every clown had made money on a pump. You know, a number of people who thought they were expert crypto traders in the last three years, it's so funny. I'm a great crypto trader. Everything went up. It all went up. We, like, what do you mean you're a great trader? You could have bought anything. You bought poo dick coin and Those made coin. money. <laughs> of course you're a trader. Like that, all that shit's over, right? So all the easy money's gone, it's all cyclical. So all the amateurs are gonna start suffering because now we're entering the realm of the professional and making money is gonna be harder than it's ever been. Yeah. All the free money's disappearing. You have to become very, very confident and competent. And that's one of the things about the last few years. Anyone who made money in those years, a lot of them didn't learn any lessons. A lot of them didn't learn how to make money. They just got lucky and just picked up a pump or caught an eye caught some garbage, but they didn't actually learn anything specifically. The best way to make money in the world today certainly has to be something online. I think that making money online gives you absolute freedom of your own geography. It gives you access to the largest possible customer base. And there's 18 different modern wealth creation methods that we teach yeah. inside of the real world that will allow people to make money online. So that's going to be a, a nice, easy plug to go there. But it's it's interesting. It's, a, it's an attention economy. And truthfully, without saying too much, you either need to be prepared to get a whole bunch of attention on you, like we're all yeah. doing here, or you need to be close to somebody who's doing that. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the money is flowing nowadays. If you want to get rich, you have to act quickly. You have to do things fast. Speed is rule one. Not enough people understand the, the importance of speed because Every hour you spend not making money is an hour you're not gonna get back. The sooner you turn on the tap to the money, the more money you're gonna make. You have to be very, very quick. A lot of people think my life is so interesting and they think the things I say are so controversial and interesting and they're 5% of what's in my head. Yeah. I could say so much more controversial things. I could say things far more abrasively and I have stories which are far more interesting than the ones anyone's ever heard. Yeah. And I only tell a very small percent because I have to protect myself and the people like you. I would have the ability to speak and everybody absorb my knowledge and words and understand that I'm ultra intelligent. And All right, fine. And, and, and no. A basic oh, wait. Superpower. Oh, wait. We're talking about I already that. have the superpower. Here we okay, are. I'm yeah. the most Googled man on okay. the planet. It's very been. hard to not become a billionaire in the world today, I think, if you're truly intellectual. I'm already a billionaire if I had to have my net worth measured. I genuinely want every single Tate fan, anybody who listens to what I say, have an improved life. Mm. I want their life to be better for listening to me, whether it's in their relationship or whether it's in their physical stature or their financial capability. The idea of a 16 year old spending their last money on a coin because I said so, mm. and them losing money would bother me at night. And they will lose it. And they will lose, of course, of course they'll lose. Mm. Crypto is, pro this is what most people don't even understand about the crypto market, it's player versus player. You can only sell it for $10 after buying it for a dollar because someone's buying it at ten dollars someone is out to lose so you can't launch a coin and nobody loses this is why i haven't launched a crypto i can make 10 billion dollars today if i launched a crypto but i refuse to do it because people are going to lose under my name yeah. it's all clown world yeah and then you get to the point where you have to realize do i need more money or do i want to genuinely be a force for good in the world mm. and i don't need money it's the last thing i need so i'm not going to sell my soul logan's obviously a brokey so he mm. sold his soul like a punk and now god then he insulted god which was great He's, you know, he's, he, I he, didn't see that. He, he, yeah, he robbed all yeah, his fans, and then he sat there and insulted God, and now God's teaching him a lesson. And maybe he's mm. take his atheistic ass and go look in the fucking mirror and understand that there's powers in his universe he doesn't understand. And he can stop being an arrogant piece of shit, and he can apologize to his fans. He can take the last money in his little brokey bank account and refund it like a man would. That's what I'd do if they were insulting me. I'd go and say, look, here's my bank of balance. I have this much money. I'm giving it to charity. Guy's a fucking punk. He just wants to continue to talk on podcasts and pretend his fans are going to care about him forever. Nobody respects that man any longer from the day he attacked me. Anybody who attacks me gets fucking wrecked. True Jordy lost every sponsor, got wrecked. Logan got wrecked. I am divinely protected. These clowns need to just not say my name. So yeah, because they're, they're people without morals. And if you have no morality on a long enough time scale, God will teach you a lesson. They're fucking morally bankrupt individuals. They're just sitting there, anything they can to sleep, grab some money from the world, fucking their fans. All the world's money. Is moving to Dubai, or at least setting up a second life in Dubai in the, in the event of something going wrong in their mm. host country where they can instantly bounce. And when I say all the world's money, I mean everyone. All the Russians are going there, Chinese are starting to go there. All the, everyone I know in Europe with money has got a second home in Dubai. Everyone's setting up because 
It's designed in a way where you can go, you can spend a few weeks there, you can get your residency, you can become a resident. It's so easy to buy property. There's 0% taxes. They've got, they've got banking, which is all legit and the best banking in the world. They've got shopping, they've got everything. It, it's almost second nature to me. It's, it's not a conscious thing. If I'm awake, I don't see why I wouldn't be doing something constructive. I'm a, I'm a conscious now, mm. I've woken up. I'm either in the gym or I'm working. I, I, what else am I gonna do besides turn my brain off in front of Netflix? It's, mm. the, it's just all clown world to me. It's, if I'm awake, it's work uh, or training. And, and that's how I've always lived. And that's just how I'm gonna live as long as I can. If I get to a point where I fully need to slow down, then I'll slow down. Well, it's interesting about watching content because watching content can be a double-edged sword. You can learn mm. a bunch of things and everyone at home here, I like to feel like they're getting value and they're learning mm. things. But there's also the other edge of people who feel like if they just watch a bunch of shit and do nothing, that they're taking action. They feel better about yeah. themselves, but they're not actually taking action. Yep. You know, so you have to balance the two carefully. Ultimately, it's going to be action that that shapes your world. Ultimately, mm -hmm. you're going to have to do something. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching something, you should be very conscious of what it is. I mean, I've created my reality absolutely. I've cut out all bullshit in my life. Like, I don't have TikTok installed on my phone, man. So I don't have anything. I don't have anything installed on my phone. I don't absorb any bullshit, fucking random entertainment. I don't watch any podcasts of anyone else. Like nothing. I don't need to. I've tried to be very, very efficient with it. But yeah, you have to be careful. You just watch too much content. Like you guys have a website, right? And you got, and you teach things. I have a website. I teach things. Whatever. If you watch this podcast and you genuinely learn things from it, then you should be on one of the two websites by the end of this. By the time the, end yeah. of the conversation ends, if you're going to watch the podcast and go, yeah, they're all pretty smart. Anyway, do to do to do, then you've wasted your time. If you're going to watch something, it needs to either tell you what to do or inspire you to take action. If you're not going to take action, you're going to fail. That's the reality. <laughs> I said, uh, I said that I don't read books and I'm, I'm very anti reading and upset a whole bunch of people. My problem with reading is not that there's not good information there, it's too slow. It feels slow. I'm with me. him. I'm with him. It feels slow. I just feel like I don't have read the hours. Read a bit faster. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. I don't have the hours. I'm now at the point where I will hand the book to my PA and say, mm. give me a two minute summary. You read like uh, uh, for me, that's just where I am. But also, you know, life teaches you a lot. And I think a lot of people are not very self-reflective of their own lives. I don't think you can read a book and that's great. But I think if you're living an interesting life, if you were to take half an hour a day to actually sit and go, okay, what good has happened to me today? And mm. what bad has happened to me today? Why have those things happened? And how can I prevent them from happening again? Most people don't, that kind of crap doesn't even cross their minds. Mm. Like every day I will sit at the end of the day and go, what bad has happened to me? How, how did that happen? Did I get caught slipping on the, was I on the street and some guys come up to me and I was, uh, it could have been a dangerous situation. Like how could I genuinely have improved my reality? And you can self-reflect and teach yourself everything. Mm. But well, that's don't total start. ownership of your life, isn't you, it? But you have to have. Mm. A lot of people don't. You have to have ownership of everything good that's ever happened to you and everything bad that's ever happened to you. I have complete ownership for the fact I was canceled. I don't sit there and go, oh, they're lying about me. Yes, they're lying, but I still own it completely. They're mm. lying about me and they're talking shit, but I own it mm. and I took responsibility for it. And I sat there and I took absolute accountability and I thought, okay, how can I turn this in my favor? And I beat them. If I'm walking down the street and it starts to rain, I take responsibility for that. I didn't have to be in rainy London. I could have been somewhere else. I could have brought an umbrella, mm. could have took a car. I am responsible for getting wet in the rain. And there's people out here who just don't take any responsibility for their own actions, let alone mm. the weather. You, if you take complete self accountability and you self reflect, mm. it's raining. I'm unlucky. I, I must you got told. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, but, no, but that's what they'll say. I got wet because it rained, not my fault. Whereas I'll say, I got wet because I did not prepare for the rain. And, and life is a value exchange. Every mm. friendship, every relationship, every business relationship, there has to be an exchange of value. Mm. If you're, as you progress through life, if people stay in the same place, you're only giving value. You're not receiving mm. any value back. And you have to be ruthless about those things. Like I have a very curated circle and everybody in my circle is extremely useful and we're extremely successful. And, and it's a very motivating thing. If you're in a room full of ice cream experts mm. and all they talk about is ice cream, how to move ice cream, how to sell ice cream, different flavors of ice cream, how you make ice cream, mm. you're gonna learn a lot about ice cream. If you're in a room full of people who are billionaires, and guess what they're talking about? Money. And guess mm. what you're gonna learn about? Money. Mm. I, I don't sit and have pointless conversations with people. Every, I don't even know what people are talking about. If me and my friends meet, we end up talking about the earth and how it can pay us. That's, the, that's what we talk about. And, that's how we managed to make a bunch of money. So you have to be ruthless with your circle. And for people out there who understand this, a lot of people say they understand it, but they genuinely don't. But if you do, and you are trying to progress your circle, you, you need to find a way to provide value. You need to either join networks like my one on corporate or you need to find a way to provide value. I'll give you an example. 
in Romania, I was driving and I went to a town called Cluj. It's a very small town. I went in a nice car and a kid came up to me and he said, I, I run the car spotting page and we, we take pictures of the Ferraris and that and I take a picture. I said, yeah, sure. And anyway, he took a picture of it and then he gave me his business card and he said, I just want you to know, I don't even like cars. I just knew the best way for me to meet rich people is to take photos of nice cars. It's a great story. I was like, it? I was like, you're smart. Very I, smart. I hired him. I'm not surprised. Really? He works for me. Yeah. <laughs> he still works for me for this day. Yeah. He was smart enough to go, well, where's the money over mm. there? Yeah. How do I get close to the money? Oh, they don't want to talk to me. But if mm. I take cool photos of his car, he might want to talk to me. Mm. You have to find a way to provide value to people. Yeah. If you provide value and it's a value exchange, you'll do good. But yeah, I say this to people and they go, oh, but my friend and you know, we, we have a good time together. Well, if you're going to prioritize your friends by drinking mm. and having fun, then you're going to have a bunch of fucking loser friends. That's, mm. that's your life and you, that's your life to live. It's fine. Don't complain mm. when the NHS are on strike and you can't get seen and I'm in a private hospital in fucking Saudi. That's your problem. You have to just make your decisions in life and, and, live, and live, live true to them. But creating a circle is ultra important. Mm. And it's not just important financially, it's also important for your entire life and your mindset as a whole. Because you don't, it's amazing, especially amongst men, we never wanna be the poorest person in the room. We never wanna be the weakest person in the room. We never wanna be, so if, you, if, you are, if you're with a group of killers, you have now this massive expectation. It's almost like societal pressure and a positive force. Mm. I, if, I, if I go to my friends, I can't be the weakling. Most, most people, people are not, are not smart, smart enough. Most, most people are not people intelligent are not enough. enough. I don't work for the Matrix. I'm the opposite. I'm the Amorpheus. I'm here to free the minds. We're, we're the free people who hack into the Matrix and fight against the agents and the machines. I think money is related to power, but in and of itself, it's not the only thing that makes somebody powerful, no. But just on the checks, and I'll answer that in more detail in a second, but on the checks and balances question, if, if, if the ocean doesn't reach a point of equal and opposite force, it will just engulf the entire planet, right? There has to be an equal and opposite force at some point. I'm not talking about freeing every single person from the matrix. I'm talking about freeing enough people who are ready to understand how the world really works so that there is an equal and opposite force to the tirade of bullshit, the absolute clown world bullshit they're trying to push on all of us. If nobody stands up to it, we're gonna end up just fucking swallowing it all. Yeah, it's garbage. So you need to have an equal uh, uh, army on the other side. Those are my people. I don't work for the matrix. I'm the opposite. I'm the amorphous. I'm here to free the minds. We're, we're the free people who hack into the matrix and fight against the agents and the machines. As for money being power money is certainly related to power but to the true power of the world is influence i am currently one of the most powerful people on the planet i can influence millions and millions and millions of young people with my mouth alone by speaking that's why they fear me that's what my power is i can sit here and say the sky is green and if i say it enough people will begin to believe it that's yeah. power power is influence and every single thing that's happening in the world today, whether it's a pitched battle in Ukraine and Russia, whether it's the garbage they put on the news, whether it's the video you watch on YouTube, all of it is done with the goal of exerting influence on your mind. They're trying to control what you think. They're trying to control why you think it, why you believe it. They're trying to convince you that they haven't even put propaganda into your mind. And it's all a battle for influence. That's all this has ever been. Yeah. It's all been a battle for influence. So me having mass influence is a threat to them because they can sit there and say, you need your eighth booster jab. Yeah. And I can say that's bullshit. And we have two, at two armies, two battles of influence against each other. Most people are not smart enough. Most people are not intelligent enough to self-analyze and defrag their own brains and understand they're being programmed. Yeah. Most people do not have that level of intellect to sit there and say, every strongly held opinion that I have, where did it come from? Who told me it? And do they have my best interests at heart? You didn't like me, for example. I, no, 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 it's fine. I, I actually find it's, it's great for me to make points. So I'm glad you didn't like me. I don't like Andrew Tate. Why? Well, they told me not to like him. Who told me? Well, these people. Do they care about me? No. Like. Most people don't get an opinion and break down where it even comes from. They just get an opinion and they 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 defend it. And you'll see people arguing and fighting in the street over opinions. They don't even know where they've come from in the first place. Most people are not intelligent enough for that. So everybody and everything you consume is going to influence you to a degree. The mass media machine is trying to influence everyone. I'm trying to influence everyone. Yeah. I'm right here trying to influence people. I'll sit here and say, I'm trying to influence people at home. I just like to think that those at home understand, yeah, Tate's influencing me, but he is living a life I want to live. He has better intentions. He has a purer heart than the mass media machine and the pedophiles of Balenciaga. But I also have to be very careful how I answer some of these questions because if I tell, give too many details, they might mess it up the deal. Well, it yeah. destroys my power, right? So. 
for the real world, when I was attacked by the mass matrix machine, they also attacked Hustlers University, yeah. which was my online school that teaches people how to make money online. We have 18 modern wealth creation methods. We teach everything from the things you know about crypto stocks, copywriting, et cetera, to some ideas people have never heard of. Yeah. We grew exceptionally large. We had people who were making a lot of money inside the school. We had 150,000 students. So when they canceled me, they also tried to attack my business. They deleted the payment process and deleted the banking, yeah. et cetera. So when we relaunched, we've relaunched as the real world, escape the matrix, come to the real world, the real world AI. It's now fully online, it's fully functioning. We have 161,000 people. We have completely built our own app, our own social media platform. It's not hosted anywhere else. It's not on Amazon servers. It's not on Google. I have my own bank, which has a payment processor included. So absolutely everything about the system is outside of the matrix. From the second you pay to the place you end up, up where you're talking to people and taking lessons, none of it is controlled by matrix control platforms. It is absolutely the real world, which means I control it completely. I cannot be censored and we teach people how to. I think I was making 25 pounds a day. So I'd start at 7 a.m. and I'd carry boxes until about 5 p.m. And when, when was the first time you actually made some money? I was kind of up and down. I was working in the fish market, but I was still fighting at the same time. I was training, obviously I was really young. Started to make a little bit of money fighting, but not much. And then I, I had different jobs. I sold television advertising, worked for an advertising company, etc. And I had my own business for a while trying to sell TV advertising. And I had a bunch of sales jobs back and forth, worked for car sales. I'd, I'd, I'd always been doing this and that going from place to place. Um, unless it was a sales job, I never really took it that seriously because it was the unlimited commission that I found attractive. But outside of sales jobs, I just did my very best to do a little bit of work and just sit at my desk. And, yeah, or most of it. But I did a whole bunch of things. It's been an eclectic, long, interesting journey to end up where I so am. So I heard somewhere you said at 27, you made your first million. Around 27, 28, yeah. I'd say by 30, I may have had maybe 10, which, which now to me seems ridiculously low. But at the time, I was super proud of that. I'm now 36. If you Google my net worth, it comes up at 350 million. And that's certainly very low. Right now, what is your net worth? It's a lot more than what they say is on Google at 350 million. You're not I, I'm the most influential person on the planet. So 350 million no, is but let, let, No, but let's, let's, let's talk about this, right? Because net worth in and of itself is bullshit. Because how do you quantify net worth? It's, yeah. it's nearly impossible. It's a valuation, right? It's a valuation and the valuations are all skewed. I, I am certainly worth more than a billion dollars. I, I can tell you why. One, for the things I own, which I'm not going to say here on camera, right? Yeah. Which is a bunch of it. Two, for the companies I have and the amount of money they generate. Once again, I won't say on camera because nobody would believe me, believe me even if I told them. But third, what were we saying earlier in this podcast? We were talking about how the most important thing on the planet is power, not money. It's influence. I'm the most influential person on the planet amongst the number one demographic that the Matrix wants control over, which is military age males. I can talk and people will listen. I'm the most Googled name on the planet. I could take a perfume and sell a billion dollars a perfume in a month if I wanted to sell my soul which I've never done because I've never sold trash to anybody I've never sold a crypto pump and dump like everybody else has I've never sold any shit to nobody yeah. all I sell is my university because it's fantastic and I can stick by it and it has five star reviews all over Google so I don't sell shit to anybody but I could sell I could pump a crypto coin to billions of dollars I could do anything for any brand and the number of brands who have come to me trying to make me align with them and I've said no because I don't truly believe in it. I'm the kind of person who can't be bought. You cannot buy my soul. If I don't truly believe I won't sell it to anybody. I am 100% with the amount of influence I have. And how do you quantify influence from a net worth perspective? How do you take the most Google man in the world who has the most influence on the planet? How do you put that into dollars? It's I difficult. Just, I love crypto, right? It's great. Bitcoin ETH. Go transact across country borders, blah, blah. It's fantastic. I've made some money on a pump. Everyone loves a pump. The problem with crypto is that it's player versus player. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand this about crypto. And it's actually very funny because when people launch these crypto coins, they get these telegram groups and they call these, they get these communities and you go into community and everyone in the community is like, yeah, we're all going to make it together. Da, da. And I look at these communities. I'm like, no, those are your competitors. Those people are who's going to buy it when you sell it for more than you bought it for. Yeah. Like you're all against each other. So they try this community crap. So the person at the top can just dump on them. The truth is about crypto is it's player versus player. If I buy a coin for a dollar, the only reason I can sell it for $10 is because someone else buys it for 10. Yeah. It can't go up forever. The guy who buys it at 10 is gonna lose yeah. eventually. So if I launch a crypto coin, I have to understand that a percentage of the people who buy it, a percentage of my fans are going to lose money in yeah. my name. I don't like the idea of people losing money in my name. Now, I'm not saying I would never launch a coin. I'm not saying that. I'm yeah. just saying that this is my reservation on the whole thing because I know if somebody joins my university and works hard, even if they only make $300 a month, for yeah. example, it only costs them $50 a month. So they make more money than they invest. 
Nobody can lose by associating with my brand. Yeah. This is why my brand's so powerful. Everybody who is a Tate fan and truly listens to my words is in better physical shape, better financial shape, better, better mental health they've ever been in their lives. Yeah. Becoming a Tate fan is a life hack to improving your life. You cannot possibly lose by listening to me in any regard. Yeah. Whereas with a crypto coin, some people will lose money. And I can't sleep at night knowing that my fans lose money. I don't want that. I'm not a scammer. I'm not one of these. I'm not Logan Paul. I don't sell crypto pump and dumps. I'm not a piece of shit. I want everybody who's associated with me to win and only win. So for that reason, I would be extremely hesitant about launching a crypto coin. And the, the day I do it, if I decide to do it, there's going to be a lot of checks and balances and absolute transparency to make sure that